Aloha! I feel so good to be back in the midst of you and being on Maui. I miss being here so much, more than any other times, because in California, I was suffering, all Californians, as a matter of fact, suffering from heat waves. I mean, more than ever before. I mean, usually three or four days, triple digits, and then a few days off of triple digits, double digits, and out of the week. But at this time, it was more than two weeks and little break. And on top of that, there was uh, fires going on all of the up and downs of California and Sacramento is kind of valley and smoke stayed, lingered around for days after days. And there was lightning and caused more fires and there was demonstrations going on on the streets and they are burning the properties of uh, somebody else's. And they say it's a peaceful. There is no peace in that riot, in that demonstration. There were lots of rulers and it was just chaos all over. And when you turn on the TV, you get bombarded information, confusing information, and more riots, more demonstrations, and more uh, burning, and more of uh, natural disasters all over. Oh boy, it doesn't give you any rest. It doesn't make you feel really comfortable at peace and the more i think of uh, what we are going through right now i am thinking of the end is nearer than ever before our bible talks about the signs we've seen the proximity of closing in the end time signs going off all around us. Do we realize it? I'm sure many of you feel and sense that, oh yes, plagues after plagues, weird times come and goes, and the life we have known is gone, right? And the life we really, as human beings living on earth, will be ended soon. Don't you feel that? I mean, it's a glorious, a blessed time for the Christians who are prepared for his return. But those of us who are not prepared for his return will be very anxious afraid, filled with the fear, anxiety, as we go through this current situation, many of us are filled with anxiety, filled with uh, fear, filled with worries. What's going to happen? Was it, is it going to be better or get worse? Are we prepared? for the end, the, the date. Our Bible passage today talks about the date that what to be prepared for it. It describes current situation, look around you, what's going on, and be prepared for the time. And Romans chapter 13 verses 11 through 14 
and we don't have a PowerPoint today. So let us open our Bibles and you can use your phone, anything. All right. And we are just going to cover only four verses this morning. All right. All right. You ready? And this one tells us how to get ready for the end time. How do we? I will come up with two W's, two W's, right? Two whiskey. It's not the bottles of whiskey I'm talking about, the letters of W. Ready? All right. Verse 11, it says what? To understand this, understand the current time where you are, what's going on around you, what's going on in the whole wide world, what is happening in this present time. And he says, for salvation has come nearer. Therefore, wake up from your slumber. Right? Full salvation. When we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, our justification is done there. But till the rapture, till we die, we've got to work out our salvation. That is called the sanctification. Right? So whether we die first before Lord's return or when he returns, the full salvation comes. Amen. So that's what he's talking about. So full salvation is nearer than ever before. Therefore, we need to wake up from our slumber. Slumber represents what? Our laziness, complacency, lukewarm attitude. Slumber is a derail from our faith journey. Slumber represents Backsliding, slumber represents all sorts of hindrance in our faith journey. So, wake up from your slumber. That's no brainer, right? But you say sleep is a good thing. Sleep makes refreshes our body, rejuvenates our body, revitalizes our body. If we don't have enough sleep, we get cranky, right? And what do you mean? Wake up from your slumber, your sleep. It talks about physical, emotional, spiritual, all around. Wake up on the right time, in the right place, at the, at the right purpose, with the right purpose. Let, 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 let me explain in this to you. Uh, in the book of uh, Judges, right? There is a Samson and Delilah, right? And it is telling us falling asleep at the wrong time, in the wrong place, as dangerous, devastate your life, our life. Samson fell asleep on the lap of Delilah after he gave her his uh, secret of strength because she seduced him saying that if you love me, you would tell me the secret of your strength. Many, many times, if you love me. If Samson had known that she would say that only to betray him, he would not have told her, right? That's what seduction uh, is all about. It covers with a sweet, soft aroma, beautiful, 
classification of seduction that nobody really can tell unless you are awake in the spirit of the living God. So Samson was uh, no dummy, right? But he fell for Delilah's, Del, Del, what do you say? Delight, Delilah's, his beauty and hooked on and guess what? His strength was zapped up and it brings destruction of his life. We are created by God. We are conquerors of life. And we are the followers of Jesus. We've got to be awake in the spirit of the living God. And no time to doze off. No time to sleep. No time to complacent about our faith journey. Remember disciples, his favorite ones, three of them, John and James and Peter. Jesus took them to Mount of Gethsemane and he told them, stay here while I go up the mountain and pray. And his prayer was so strong and his blood, Bible says, his uh, the sweat turned into the blood. That's how intensive the moment was. And yet he returned, found his disciples what? Sleep. And Jesus said, your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. A lot of us, we know enough. We've been Christian long enough. We know something's going to happen, about to happen. Our spirit is willing, but our body, our flesh, is weak because we are surrounded. Our flesh is surrounded by the world, by the media, mass media, all sorts of uh, divided opinions. We are going through unprecedented, unprecedented, un predictable, unbearable time we ever, ever have gone through. Oh yes, it certainly tells us that time is nearer and we need to what? wake up, wake up in the Lord and be strengthened by the Lord. We have a poor visibility all around us. Everything covers entire atmosphere where we are going. We cannot see a lot of things hinders our faith journey. You know, when you uh, fly an airplane, when you have a poor visibility, then you rely on instruments and hope and pray that instruments working right and bring you to your destination. When you get down to the nearby the airport, if you don't see clearly, the runway you have to go miss and try another airport and what would be our instrument 
I mean, airplane instruments can malfunction, but our instrument will never ever malfunction, right? The instrument is the word of God and his promise and his spirit in us, with us. I mean, can you imagine that his promises that the one who is in you is greater than the one who is in the whole wide world. If we can get this concept, it's John, first John chapter four, verse four. If we can stand on these promises, the one who overcome the world, the one who died and resurrected from the dead, I and mean, the one who has whole wide world in his hand is in you. If we can comprehend that, if we can sense his spirit, his, uh, his, his empowerment in our lives, oh yes, we are not going to be derailed by the seduction of Delilah. The world, no matter how they beautifully quoted, no matter how sweet aroma it presents, we are not going to fall for it when we can stand on the love of God. We can stand on the grace of God. We can stand on his promise. Don't be afraid. Don't be dismayed. I am with you. I am your God. I will uphold you with my righteous right arms. Hallelujah. There is no problem too big. God cannot, God has not solved in our lives. There is no sorrow that's so deep. God cannot soothe. You know it. I know it. Faithful people know this, and we lived through it, and we experienced it. We've heard about it. Times like this, we need to wake up in the spirit of the living God. We need to wake up in the promise of God. We need to wake up how great is our God. We need to remember wake up refreshing by how great our God has been with us. Therefore, we know, we can believe, we can trust. He will be with us. He has all our needs. He is going to fill, meet all our needs so that don't ever have to worry about what tomorrow will bring. Just trust in the Lord and wake up in his spirit. Wake up in his promises. Wake up. It's no time to doze off. No time to fall asleep. No time to have a slumber party. No time. It is time to wake up. In the Lord. Amen. So, what is the first uh, W? Wake up in His Spirit. Wake up in His promises. Amen. That's how we can prepare for the D date. Prepare, prepare for the end. Amen. And the second W is this. Let's look at verse 13. We wonder, we wake up, if when we are wake up, awaken in the spirit of living God, we've completed preparation for the D date is 50% done. Did you know that? And verse 13 tells us that. Verse 13 says, uh, verse 11 says uh, the wake up, and verse 13 says what? Let us be decent. Let us behave decently, right? And how do we do that? Get rid of all the deeds of darkness. What's the deeds of darkness? Deeds of darkness is uh, belonging to what? Desires of flesh, desires of uh, the world, 
their offers, all the slander, all kinds of malice, evil, spirit, seduction, or get rid of all the deeds of darkness. Deeds of darkness, gossiping, yes. Hatred, yes. Doubt, yes. Worry, yes. Criticism, yes. Every kind of these get rid of. Not only that, we need to what? Put on the armor of light. Put on the armor of light. What is armor of light? What is light? Light is light of Jesus, right? Light. Put on where the light of Jesus, where the light of Jesus. Now, the light has come to shine its light, his light to darkness, to brighten the dark world. But they did not receive him. And the light represents what? God's love and grace. God so loved the world. He sent all his only begotten son. Whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life, right? God so loved the world. He sent his only begotten son, the light of the world. His love and grace. And our Bible says, love fulfills all the laws. Laws of don'ts and thou shalt not. Love covers it all. Jesus said, I did not come to abolish, destroy the laws, shall thou shalt not, but fulfill the law. Because his love fulfills the law. Let me explain. You have a five-year-old boy, grandson, or your son, as when you were raising them, and you tell them, brush your teeth, uh, wash, clean up yourself before you go to bed, and tuck your shirt in, and comb your hair, and have a right manner while eating dinner time, the meal time, and pray meal time. What else? Or treat your sister nice, girls nice, don't fight with the girls, etc. And they go, why should I? Right? Then you say, because I say so. This is the rule of the house. As long as you live under my roof, thou shalt keep the rules of mine, right? And they have hardly follow your rule, right? Because otherwise they're going to suffer the consequences. You will withhold their liberty. You will withhold their bonds, etc. But when they become 15 years old, 16, 17, they found a girl they like. Their hearts go after her. Now, you don't have to tell him to clean up, do you? You don't have to tell him wear some nice shirt, nice clothes. You don't have to tell him, don't argue because, don't argue with the girls. They are after the attractive woman. They want to have their attention to them when they are in love. And somebody, you will do anything for them right? And thou shalt not 
comes, fulfills automatically. That proves love fulfills, love covers everything. Love don't do no harm to nobody. That's what the Bible says. And there is a gift that love is the most important gift thou shalt have. And before this passage, chapter 13, verse 8 says, Let no debt outstanding except that of love, because love fulfills the laws. In other words, we are indebted to one another to love forever. I owe you a debt of love. Ever since God sent me here, you accepted me as your pastor, teacher, and God's mouthpiece, and you've supported me, you've encouraged me, you've helped me, you've strengthened me, and I owe you that of love. My love for you grows every day more and more, bigger and bigger, as well as you owe the debt of love to me and to others, to even your enemies. You owe debt of love to your parents, you can agree. You owe debt of love to your neighbors. All of us all that of love to our Lord Jesus, right? How do we continually repay the debt of love? It's impossible for us alone to do it. We are selfish. We don't fear we owe any that of love to anyone, right? Unless we are so in wet with the love of God, Christ dwells in me, Christ's love touches my heart, Christ's love empowers me. Christ's love set me free. Christ's love permeated in my life. Lead me. Otherwise, I cannot constantly repay you that of love. So do you. We need Christ be in the center of our hearts from the inside out, especially his love. If when we do not experience his love, we do not have a love that can share with others. We cannot wear his love from inside out. Superficially, yes. Wear his love from the inside out. That means we've got to spend really good time, more time with Christ, with his love. We've got to realize how much, how much he loves us. I mean, can you imagine the excruciating pain he went through when he stretched his arms on the cross? He endured pain, and suffering, he endured the ridic ridic ridicule, he endured mockings. Just thought of you, thought of you and I, we all, that of love to Christ. When we are in love with God, with love with Jesus Christ, then we can 
our love will do everything that God says thou shalt not, thou shalt. Yes, it will fulfill the law because it's out of our hearts, out of our minds, and it induces us to do so. Amen. So where Christ's love from the inside out, we need to be soaking wet in Christ's love. Amen. Bible says his love will never, never separate us. Never ever. It's a double negative. Never ever. Nor death or life. Nor height and depth of the sea. No trials or tribulations. No nothing can separate us from his love. And we can hold on to that love, experience that love, let his love help us to overcome, let his love help us to go through the trials and tribulations, help us go through the, this uh, poor visibility, poor air quality, well, everything just confusing us, and let his love permeate in our lives so that we can wear his love from the inside out. Wherever we go, there is Christ-like love. We can share. We have aroma of Jesus. Amen? Yes, that's how we can prepare for the end return of Christ. Amen? What's the second W is where the light of Jesus, where the love of Jesus will form the inside out. Amen. As God's chosen ones, as the one who knows the way, who knows better what needs to be done, because we follow the one who knows the way, who is the life, who is the truth. Let us be anchored down by his word, by his spirit, by his love and grace so that we can be a victor, we can be a conqueror. Jesus overcame the world and we can also overcome the world that surrounds us. Amen. And that's how we can be prepared. How shall we be prepared? Two W's. Right? First one, wake up from your slumber. Awaken in the spirit of the living God. And second, wear the light of God, light of Jesus, love of Jesus. From where? From the inside out so that wherever you go there is love there is sweet aroma christ permeates in the whole wide world amen amen let us pray lord god we thank you thank you for your amazing grace amazing love Knowing the depth of our hearts, you still love us. Oh God, we thank you. You have chosen us to be yours. You have given us chance after chance. Help us to be prepared as we see all the signs around us. We hear close proximity warnings. Yes, Lord God, help us zero in our faith journey. Help us zero in, focus on you. You alone, Lord God. Yes, Lord God. In Jesus' name, all God's people say, Amen. Amen.